This is the Computer Museum in Boston. There's no other place quite like it in the world. It's two computer buffs. What the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown is to baseball fans. The whole history of computers is inside here. But today, the Computer Museum is doing something special. They're putting on the first ever Computer Bowl with a team of top computer celebrities from the Silicon Valley taking on a group of computer experts from the Route 128 area here in Boston to see who knows more about computers. Today, part one of the first ever Computer Bowl, the East against the West, on this special edition of the Computer Chronicles. Chronicles is made possible in part by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte Magazine, and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange. In print and online, Byte and Bix serve computer professionals worldwide with detailed information on new hardware, software, and technologies. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and with me this week is Esther Dyson. Esther, we're here in the auditorium of the Boston World Trade Center for the Computer Bowl to see how much you guys really do know about computers here as your East Coast team takes on David Bennell's West Coast team. The point of the Computer Bowl is really to raise money here for a Junior Bowl series of programs to help teach high school kids about computers. Uh, October happens to be, appropriately enough, Computer Learning Month. I was wondering how you think we're doing in this country at the high school level to teach our students about computers. Well, I think this is a sign we still need to do more, but it's starting to happen. Computers are turning up in schools. Teachers are learning how to use them. Uh, students are understanding they need them not just to study about computers, but to use computers. They're going to use them in college. They're going to use them in their jobs and maybe even at home. And things like this are helping, I think, to erase some of the enthusiasm that we need. Esther, good luck to you and your East Coast team. We're ready to start the Computer Bowl Part 1 in just a moment, so stay with us. On behalf of the Computer Museum, welcome to the world's first Computer Bowl. Thank you. My name is Chris Morgan. And you know, there's always been a friendly rivalry of sorts, sometimes not so friendly, between the computer people on the East Coast and the ones on the West Coast. But which group really has the sharpest computer experts? We'll try to answer that question today as we pit the East Coast against the West Coast in a high-tech showdown for the title of Computer Masters of the Universe. <laughs> now let's meet our panelists. They're some of the best-known people in the computer industry. For the West Coast, Dr. Adele Goldberg, President and CEO of Park Place Systems, specializing in object-oriented software development systems. Next, we have Bill Joy, co-founder of Sun Microsystems, a Silicon Valley company making desktop workstations. Next, Casey Powell, President and CEO of Sequent Computers Incorporated, makers of multiprocessor mini computers. Then we have Alan Michaels, Chairman and CEO of Ardent Computer Company, developers and manufacturers of graphics supercomputers. Our captain for the West Coast team is David Bennell, Chairman and CEO, PCW Communications, publishers of PC World, Mac World, and other computer periodicals. And now the East Coast team, beginning with Esther Dyson, software expert and editor publisher of the computer newsletter, Release 1.0. Next, Mitchell Kapor, chairman of On Technology and founder of Lotus Development Corporation. <laughs> David Hathaway, partner of Venrock Associates, a venture capital firm best known for their investments in Apple Computer and Intel. Bill Pedusco, okay. chairman and CEO of Stellar Computer, developers of graphics super workstations for engineers and scientists. And our team captain for the East Coast is Dick Schaefer, editor publisher of the Technologic Computer Letter and former technology columnist for the Wall Street Journal.
Now it's my great pleasure to introduce the man who will be asking the questions tonight, someone who covers the high-tech field for a living. Please welcome our examiner, the editor and publisher of the San Francisco Examiner, William Hurst III. I'm ready, Will. Let's start right in. First, a little microcomputer history. Dick Heiser opened the world's first microcomputer store in West Los Angeles in 1975. For 10 points, was it called Computerland, the itty bitty computer company, or the computer store? West Coast, Bunnell. The computer store. Yes. All right. All right. Okay, that's 10 to nothing for the west side. 10 point question. Who wrote the first book about personal computers in 1974? West Coast, Joy. Oh, uh, Ted Hoff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> East Coast, Kapor. Yeah, um, Ted Nelson, uh, Computer Lib and Dream Machines. This is a 10-point question. How long would it take to send the Encyclopedia Britannica over a two gigabit fiber optic cable? <laughs> would it be two seconds, two minutes, or 20 minutes? East Coast, Cape Horror. Two seconds. Right. Yeah. All right, this is a toss-up question. Hey, let's go. For 10 points, the letters in most software languages form acronyms. Which of the following two language names is not an acronym? Fortran or Ada? West Coast, Joy. Ada. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now we have a bonus round. For five points apiece, we'll name the people and you name the computer languages they invented. You can consult. Kenneth Iverson. APL. <laughs> this computer technology needs work here. <laughs> John why Backus. We, why can't we hear the West Coast cheer when we get these right? <laughs> <laughs> when, the, when the East Coast gets one right, we hear the East Coast cheer. <laughs> Fortran. <laughs> the answer is Fortran. Fortran is correct. <laughs> John McCarthy. Lisp. Oh, Lisp. Yes. Nicholas Veer. Pascal. Yeah. All right, this is an individual question. Either side may answer. What high tech company determined whether the 18.5 minute gap in the Nixon tape was deliberate? East Coast, K4. Both Brannock and Newman. Yes. Fast response, and now the score is the West team 55 points and the East Coast 30 points. Right. It's close, folks, it's close. All right, this is a toss-up question. Life is a well-known computer game. Of the following three people, who won Scientific American's Game of Life contest by creating the first glider gun? Was it Bill Gosper, Donald Knuth, or David All? East Coast, Cape Or. Gosper. <laughs> okay, we're in the bonus round. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the bonus round, and you can consult. We can? <laughs> I had $1,000 a day, right? <laughs> Here's a four-part question, four, 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 four questions, actually, about computers in the movies. First, in what Disney movie do the main characters live inside a computer? Tron. Yes. <clears throat> what was the name of the robot in the film The Day the Earth Stood Still? Was it Robbie, Gort, or Brainiac? Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
correct answer was? Gort. What computer co-starred with Robert Redford in the film Three Days of the Condor? A PDP-11, an Apple II, or a Cray-1? PDP-11. Very good. Finally, what company worked with Disney to supply effects for the animated cartoon classic Fantasia? Was it IBM, Hewlett Packard, or Sperry Rand? Sperry. Wow. Hewlett Packard is the correct answer. All right. Okay, everybody. <laughs> We're out of the bonus round. Back to a 10-point question. Either side may answer. What was the first name of the inventor of Boolean algebra? East Coast, Schaefer. George. George Boole is correct. Yes. OK. It's the East Coast, 60. The West Coast, 55. <laughs> Dartmouth College is famous for many com computer firsts. <laughs> Let him guess. Shall I complete right, this? Coast, I joy. Basic. Oh. 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 Sorry. Minus ten, minus ten points. I'm question. sorry, you interrupted us and you were incorrect, so we'll have to. We pose the question to the East? Yes, after we deduct ten points from the West Coast score. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it, you have to be heartless sometimes at these <laughs> kinds of things. Dartmouth College is famous for many computer firsts. For 10 points, of the following three pioneering events, which did not take place at Dartmouth? <laughs> <laughs> A classic East Coast question. <laughs> <laughs> and here are the three. The first remote computer link up, the first AI workshop, or the first color video terminal? East Coast, k -Pora. First color video terminal. OK, we'll stop. We'll stop just for a second now to tell you that the score is the East Coast, 70. The West Coast, 45. We'll continue with a history question now. Many people believe that ENIAC was the first electronic digital computer. But a recent article in Scientific American claims this honor should really go to another computer pioneer. For 10 points, is this person Stibitz, Atanasoff, East at, Coast, at, at, Atanasoff. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> oh, Zeus. Right. I'm, I'm using. Very good. We're using polling logic here to uh, get the right answers. <laughs> For 10 points. The word, <laughs> the word modem is formed from what two words? East Coast, K-Por. Uh, modulator, demodulator. Yeah. That's right. Can we have now, a timeout? <laughs> <laughs> the score. The score is the East Coast 90, the West Coast 45. And that's the signal for the end of the first round. Is there round. a difference in the altitude here? <laughs> the computer bowl we're ready to start round two of this battle of computer wits and right now the east coast team is ahead let's go back to our examiner will hurst and our mc chris morgan all right let's go on now to round two will all right for 10 points what was the first home computer to sell a million units was it the apple II? the east coast k4 apple II. Oh. i'm sorry we'll have to deduct 10 points from the east coast okay. score and repeat the entire question for the West Coast. For 10 points, what was the first home computer to sell a million units? Was it the Apple II, the Commodore VIC-20, or the TRS-80? 
Commodore West Coast, Vic Benel. 20. Commodore Vic 20? That's correct. That was only 10 points. <laughs> <laughs> the Pizza Time restaurant chain was started by Atari founder Nolan Bushnell. <laughs> West Coast. How? <laughs> Your answer, please. <laughs> well. <laughs> Give it a try, Casey. I don't, what the I don't get to confer on this one, huh? <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> yes. Good guess. Uh, just so you'll know, Casey, the question was... <laughs> yeah. For 10 points, what was the name of Pizza Time's mouse robot? Thank you very much. <laughs> My children will be pleased to hear I got that right. <laughs> now we have a, a regular 10-point question. Either side may answer. For 10 points, is Rocky's Boots a program to teach children logic, a walking robot, or a PC bootstrap program? East Coast, Dyson. Teach children logic. Yes, that's correct. Now we have a toss-up question. I have a portable Go gadget here to show you as part of this question. Portable. Okay. Go ahead, Will. During World War II, the Allies used computers to decode secret messages written by the Nazis on machines like this. For 10 points, was this machine called the Ultra, the Ace, or the... En West Coast, Joy. The Enigma. Right. The Bomb and Colossus are names of two computing devices developed during World War II. For 10 points, were they used for designing the A-bomb, for cryptography, or for designing a radar? Talk it over. Cryptography. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is not portable. <laughs> It weighs about 70 pounds. Let me just tuck it under here, and we'll continue. It's an individual question. Either side may answer. For 10 points, what was the first software company to go public on the New York Stock Exchange? East Coast, Schaefer. Cullinan. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK, it's close. It's the East Coast 100, the West Coast 95. For 10 points, which of the following did Bill Gates not do? <laughs> A, drop out of Harvard. B, program the PDP-10. Or C, have a 1,000-person 25th birthday party. East Coast, Kapor. Have a 1,000-person 25th birthday party? <laughs> Correct. For 10 points. <laughs> Who co-founded Microsoft along with Bill Gates? East Coast, Kapor. Paul Allen. Yes. For 10 points, are computers mentioned anywhere in George Orwell's 1984? East Coast, Kapor. No. Yeah. <laughs> In 1888, William Burroughs was granted a patent. For 10 points, was it for the printing adding machine, the difference engine, or the punched card? East Coast, Schaefer. Printing adding machine. That's correct. <laughs> for 10 points, how far can electricity travel in a nanosecond? West Coast, Powell. One foot. We have a slightly three different. Of a foot through physical media. We have a slightly different answer. Did you say three quarters of three a foot? Three quarters of a foot through physical media, <clears throat> one foot theoretical. All right, averaging those two answers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to the judges, and the judge says yes. We'll give it to you. <laughs> we 
we had three choices, 1.8 inches, 10.8 inches, or 108 inches. All right, for 10 points, this is an individual question. Either side may answer. Is caduceus a high-level language, a data general computer, or a medical diagnosis? East Coast, K4. Med medical expert system. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Now, there's a bonus round coming up about famous computer books. But first, this 10-point toss-up question that gets you into the bonus round. What book about computers won the Pulitzer Prize? East Coast, Hathaway. Soul of New Machine. All right, in this bonus round, for five points apiece, you may consult. Tell us who wrote the following books. The Art of Computer Programming. Donald Knuth. <laughs> the Third Apple. Jean-Louis Gasset. Jean-Louis Gasset. <laughs> the Ninth Bridgewater Treatise. <laughs> May we have your answer, please? Knight and Bridgewater. What was the answer? Knight and Bridgewater. Oh. <laughs> the answer was Charles Babbage. Oh. <laughs> okay, the score. The score is the East Coast 170 and the West Coast 105. <laughs> We're gonna have to get on the stick, West Coast. <laughs> That's okay. All right, let's move along. For 10 points, either side may answer. A rectifier changes AC current to DC. What does an inverter do? East Coast, Pedesco. An inverter converts DC to AC. Hey. For 10 points, Ivan Sutherland described the first interactive graphics program. For East Coast, K4. Sketchpad. <laughs> telephone call in the lobby for Mitch K4. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of the round, and the score is East Coast 190, West Coast 115. Right. That's the first half of the Computer Bowl, and at halftime, the East Coast has the lead. We'll have the final rounds of the Computer Bowl. Be sure to join us right here next week on the Computer Chronicles. Access file this week, Compaq has finally introduced its long-awaited laptop computer. The machine is called the SLT286. It features the 8286 chip running at 8 or 12 megahertz. It has a detachable keyboard. It weighs in at 14 pounds and runs on a nickel cadmium battery pack with an estimated three hours of use per charge. The screen is a super twist LCD with a high resolution of 640 by 480 with eight shades of gray. The Compaq SLT286 comes with one three and a half inch floppy and a 20 or 40 megabyte hard drive. The price begins at 5400. Compaq said it did not plan to bring out a 386 laptop until it could solve the problem of battery power. Existing 386 laptops only get about one hour of use for battery charge. Meanwhile, elsewhere on the laptop front, Grid unveiled its new 386 laptop. It comes with two IBM type expansion slots, base price $7,500. Sharp introduced a 286 laptop with VGA emulation and 16 levels of gray, price $5,600. And in Tokyo, the Seiko Epson company said it'll be coming out next year with the first color laptop, featuring a screen that can display 4,000 colors. Seiko said the price will be $7,800. It will use the 286 chip. The reviews are slowly coming in on Steve Jobs' next computer, and they are mixed in general praise for a nice packaging of existing hardware technology, an excellent user interface for Unix, but concerns about the small potential market and whether or not there will be enough software support. Another concern was the lack of a traditional disk drive forcing developers to offer software on an expensive optical disk or via the Ethernet port. 
However, the next deal with IBM for use of the Next Step interface on IBM's Unix machines may motivate programmers to write for the next computer. The big question for most observers was, will the next be another Macintosh or another Lisa? Everex has introduced the most powerful PC ever using the new Intel 8386SX chip. It's called the Step 386IS and it clocks in at 3.2 MIPS compared to 2.5 MIPS for the new Compaq Desk Pro 386. The Everex machine is priced at $3,300 compared to $3,800 for the Compaq. The Nixdorf Computer Company says it has developed a new computerized voting machine that represents the first new technology in voting machines since the machine was invented 100 years ago by Thomas Edison. The Nixdorf voting machine is a touchscreen terminal much like your bank's ATM machine. There are no punched cards, no printed ballots, and the voting machine can easily display information in any language. The Nixdorf voting machine also features pictures of the candidates on the CRT and the ability to easily enter write-in candidates. Finally, a team of computer researchers has set a record for factoring the largest number ever, a 100-digit number, and they did it without using a supercomputer. It took them a month, and they used some 400 regular computers to do the job. The 100-digit number was broken down into two prime factors, one 41 digits long and the other 60 digits long, and there actually may be some practical value in all this, since government cryptographers use supposedly unfactorable large prime numbers in developing code systems. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte Magazine and BIX, the Byte Information Exchange. In print and online, Byte and BIX serve computer professionals worldwide with detailed information on new hardware, software, and technologies. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.